Hey guys, Michael here with Hello Cupcake, it's me, and today is the Wednesday check-in. It is December 29th, 2021, so hope you all had an amazing holiday season, and uh, yeah, in just two days, we are going to be knocking on the door to New Year's, and... I know a lot of us have New Year's resolutions that we try to, like, put together every year and all that other fun stuff. Um, I have a few New Year's resolutions that I am going to try my best to uh, uphold. Uh, one of them is I really want to try to get re-enrolled in school and start taking classes. Um... The other one is I want to start getting out and walking and doing all of that, like, stuff that I was doing back in 2019, right before I got my kidney stone and all that other thing. So, like, uh, 2020, 2021, right in that time period. Um, so, I would really like to be able to start doing that, and I got my shoes that I wanted for Christmas. Um, they're not the exact same, um, style of shoe that I was looking at, but I'm, like, really happy that I got them. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try them out for, like, a week or so, see if I really like them. If not, then I'm gonna take them back and get the one with the lighter heel on it. Um, and so, I've been telling you guys about, like, Hoka Oni Oni, and... So, I don't know which way is the best way. <laughs> there they are. So, um, yeah, they're they're a little outlandish in their color. Um, maybe not a color that I would have chosen, but they were a gift, and they were given to me for Christmas. So, um, I mean, they're not horrible, but I am so happy, and they are, like... The sole doesn't really flex all that much. Like, it's good, sturdy. It's got an amazing traction on it. Very breathable material right here. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about them. Um, like I said, if these don't work out for me, then I'm going to exchange them and get um, a set of, like, the Trail Runner style. But the heel on the ones that I want like they flare out at the bottom here but you know I oh, shoo. <laughs> so yeah and you know I hope that you got whatever it is that you needed or wanted for the holiday season and that next year if things were struggling for you this year I hope that they are much much better for you in the coming new year uh i also did a little bit of shopping for myself for christmas um i took care of everyone that i needed to take care of and i had just a few extra dollars for myself and um i am a bargain bin person like i if I know that there is a clearance section or a bargain bin, I will always hit that up first whenever I go out shopping. And, um, so I picked up a few things. I got myself some new clothes, um, and I got, like, let's see, I got two pairs of pants and four shirts, and I think I spent maybe... If I say $30, I think I would be, like, way at the top end of that. Because each of the shirts that I got were, like, $3, $4 each. And both pairs of pants were 10 So, you know, it was... After taxes and everything, it was probably close to, like, $33. But still, I got several new outfits for $33. And I was just really happy about it. And, um... I did also pick myself up a little gadget. I got myself this little device. And what this is, is it is a Bluetooth thermal printer. 
and it's actually kind of cool, guys. Um, the reason I picked this up is because I'm constantly needing to make labels for things and um, just wanting to print out really quick pictures. Now, because it is a thermal printer, it only comes out in black and white, but, you know, it's better than nothing. So, it comes with this, like, really cool little um, software. I have a graphic already loaded up. I'm not going to get into the whole shebang of it, but you just push print on your phone and it automatically prints it out. And it's running a little slow this morning, but oh well. And then it's got like a little serrated teeth so you could just rip it off real quick. And there's like all kinds of different little papers and what have you that you can use. This is like a sticker paper. And it's thermal induction, so it never needs ink. And now I have a cool little skull. And I've done other things, like I printed out pictures of uh, Bella, of course. So here's a little picture of Bella that I did. Of her wearing her little witch hat. And I printed out, like, some text instructions. And I know you can't see that very well. But, yeah, just, like, a few little fun gidget, gidget gadget thingies. Um, and... Uh, my niece got me this really amazing ring light. Like, I am so beyond freaking happy with this thing. It is so damn bright that I turned it on at midnight when it was completely dark in the house. I had all the lights shut off. This thing filled up the room plus some. Like, it made my eyes water. That's how bright it was. So I'm really super excited about that. It's a new piece of, uh, like, YouTube gear that I'm going to set up in my, um, eventually in my studio. That's the other thing that I have on the agenda for this year is to get my damn studio up and going. Um, I have all of the different fabrics for the backgrounds and the green screens and the lighting and the microphone. And all that other stuff, I just don't have it set up. And I want to take all of this and put it into that back bedroom so that I can have my living room back. Um, I personally don't really mind it here, but I kind of need the space so that I can start cleaning and getting rid of crap and all that other stuff. But yeah, so... Uh, getting back into walking and do my little hikes and all that other stuff getting back into school and uh getting my youtube studio up and going those are my three like goals for this year um i'm sure that i'm going to add some other stuff to it eventually but those are the three things that are the easiest for me to do right now and if I get one of them done, awesome. If I get none of them done, then oh well. But starting with the very easiest and the very basic, getting back out on the trails, getting out there walking, enjoying nature, taking my photo, t like doing photos and doing all that other stuff that I was doing beforehand. Second on that list, getting that... YouTube studio set up and then third is getting back into school I think that getting back into school is going to be the most difficult and um, I'll be honest guys I'm not very hopeful for it but I am staying as positive as possible because I really want to finish out my associate's degree even if I don't do anything with it I'm only like Four to six units, maybe 12 at the most, 12 units at the most from finishing out my associate's degree. And, you know, when I was in college and I used to hear, like, old got, old people talking about, like, oh yeah, well, 
I went to college and then I dropped out and it was so hard for me to get back into it and blah blah blah, blah. and now I'm here I am in my late 50s uh, finishing out school and blah ha 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 I'm like why didn't you just do it like you know the stupidity of youth here I am sitting at my 40s uh, going to be 41 this year and I'm like oh yeah I get it <laughs> life gets in the way so um really going to strive to try to do that and be in class by summer quarter at um summer quarter or fall at the very latest um so yeah that's what i have planned for me also guys okay i'm about ready to date myself and show you, like, nerdy geekiness. And those of you who were born in the 80s can understand. I found a freaking Trapper Keeper brand new in the wild at a store. It wasn't a discount store or anything like that. It was Walmart. Walmart is selling Trapper Keepers. The original freaking Trapper Keepers. This Trapper Keeper, with this design, I had this same exact design when I was in the third grade. And I got so freaking nerdy geeky over this when I found it that, like, oh my god, isn't that a retro blast from the freaking past? Like, I am so stupid nerdy over this, like, you have no idea. And so, I bought this with the hopes of, like, when I get back into school, that I can use it to go to school with and, like, just have that whole retro, like, back-in-the-day vibe. And, yeah. But the freaking Trapper Keeper is back, guys, and it's at Walmart. So I got myself one, and I got a uh, girlfriend of mine one, and I got her a... Uh, that uh, rainbow leopard print that they had, like, kind of Lisa Frank, but, um, you know, just like that 80s leopard Lisa print, uh, <laughs> Lisa print, that 80s leopard print Lisa Frank kind of, like, retro colors, <laughs> yeah. I would show you it, but I left it out in the car because I meant to stop by yesterday and drop it off to her. But her whole fam damnly is sick and not feeling well, so um, I was like, yeah, about that. I ain't about to go getting, like, whatever virus you got going on. So, yeah. I know that was totally geeky, totally nerdy, but... If you are a retro, like, it, if you lived through the 80s, the Trapper Keeper is where it was. Like, you wanted no other folder or binder or whatever. You always wanted the Trapper Keeper with those folders in the middle and, like, that one peachy folder. And <laughs> then you would have, like, your pencil pouch with all your different pencils and your tricolored click pins. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said, I know I'm dating myself with the tricolor click pins and the Trapper Keeperness of it all, but uh, those of you who are in your, like, late 30s to 40s or whatever and lived through the 80s, you understand. The rest of you fetuses, sorry, just know that the Trapper Keeper is where it's at. Hit up YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can find the old retro, like, Trapper Keeper commercials. Um... And plus, it's just fun to say Trapper Keeper. Like, we don't have any idea what the hell Trapper Keeper means. We weren't trapping anything, but it was just, it was cool. So, yeah. Sorry, I had to geek out for a moment there. Uh, what else is going on? Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, if you've been following around my YouTube shorts... Uh, you will see that we have had a lot of snow here. Um, still have a lot of snow, but today the sun is out. So I'm hoping that uh, 
that big golden orb is going to melt off a lot of this snow and like get us back to normal because having 12 degree weather is not for fun and like we completely switched what was happening like back east is like 50 and 60 and here it's 12 degrees like mm, tell me global warming isn't a thing without telling me global warming isn't a thing uh, but yeah, so um, I've had to go out and brave the elements several times uh, over the last couple of days. And growing up out in the desert and driving ETCs, quads, dune buggies, and all that other stuff, I'm fairly like acclimated to off-road vehicling and how it feels when you're driving and all that other stuff and so for me driving in the snow and the ice is no different than driving on the sand dunes and hitting like really loose sand and um when you were when you're driving a dune buggy and for those of you who don't know what a dune buggy is it's a car that you drive through the desert um Let's see, uh, my nose is itchy. I'm sorry, that's why I keep like, Arr. uh, so yeah, it's like this big giant car. It's just got metal, uh, bars all around it, and it's completely open. Huge motor in the back. Usually, you could sit three people in the back, two people in the front. Manual, uh, manual shifting, clutch, gas, brake, the whole nine yards. So, um, and they go hella fast. Like, you can get up to 70, 80 miles an hour depending on the, like, the condition of the vehicle. Um, but, like, when you're driving along and you turn real fast, if you start to slide and you, like, if you're turning and you, you're going to the right you turn your steering wheel to the left and you don't hit the gap or you take your foot off the gas and you don't touch the brake and you turn your steering wheel to the left it will then pop you back into place and you'll just like fishtail a little bit so i apply that same principle to driving a car on ice and a lot of people the second that they like start like going into a spin they tense up and they hit the brake, and then that just causes them to spin more. But if you're going, and you turn, and you start to, like, come out this way, you take your foot off the brake, or you, you take your foot off the gas, you don't touch the brake, you turn the opposite direction, and you don't do, like, a fast, uh, you do, like, a gradual turn to pull yourself back into this. And then you'll slow, you'll start to slow down, and then you go. And you know if you're going uphill or downhill, you want to hit it at a kind of a fast pace, or drop your thing, drop your uh, gear into third or even second, and go up it slow. But a lot of times, if you're going up up things slow. You're not going to have the momentum to get you up and over and you'll start sliding back and then you lose control. So there's like this whole, this whole like rigmarole row that you got to go through and like you're taught from a very young age when you're riding motorcycles and stuff like that, that if you're going up a hill to get up the hill, you want to punch it and you want to go as fast as you can to get up that hill to maintain momentum because otherwise if you start to roll back there's a chance that you're going to flip or you're going to crash and get seriously injured it's you don't let off the gas until you're at the very top of the hill and a lot of people like if you watch the dune races or like um there's a there's a place in um southern california known as competition hill in glamis and it is just this wall of dirt that is almost a sheer cliff. It's like probably a good 85, 90 degree, ang almost 90 degree angle, yeah. It's probably 80, 85 degree angle. And 
people just drive up that all day long. Just wah, 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 and um, you can tell the pros, or you know, the pros from the people who just get out there and play around because the people who just get out there and play around they don't realize that you have to hit that wall doing like a good 50 60 miles an hour and stay on top of that gas pedal the whole way up otherwise you're dead um so yeah i i just take all of that like desert boy southern california knowledge and apply it here to the Pacific Northwest where there is copious amounts of snow and <clears throat> yeah I had to go to the store the other day and um, as I was pulling out of Safeway I purposely fishtailed because there was really no one behind me and no one coming or going so I was like I'm just gonna play around a little bit and you know I have a Subaru and it's a uh, four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, so I was just like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> but, um, when I got to the, when I got to the intersection, and I went to make a turn, I didn't know that I was going to spin that time, but I was like, okay, we're spinning, we're spinning, and corrected myself, and then just kept on going, and I watched in the rearview mirror that, like, the car that was directly behind me that was getting pissed off because I wasn't going because traffic was, like, crawling um they completely spun out and got stuck in the middle of the lane and they tried to turn to go up the hill and they kept sliding back so they finally stopped and then had to like reroute themselves and go a completely different direction and i'm sitting there like <laughs> but whatever so yeah um That's what's been going on. <laughs> uh, so I see that we're past the 20 minute mark and I'm sorry guys, I'm just in a really good mood right now and I know that I'm rambling and all the other stuff. Um, but there's one more thing that I want to talk to you guys about, like especially uh, to the lower income people and um, those of you who live in frigid temperature areas. Um, there's this thing called a microclimate, and basically all it is is that you are taking an area of your house and sectioning it off with um, a blanket or something like that. And um, so if you have a big house and it's kind of drafty, like this house that I'm in, it's a double wide, it's like 1970s, 1980s, doesn't have really good insulation has really thin windows um the living room is actually pretty freaking cold it's uh probably about 58 to 65 degrees in here which during the summertime you know that's perfect but in the winter time that's like bone chilling and um you know it it is kind of cold and i but i like it cooler but in my bedroom now, it was really, really freaking cold. And on those days where it was like 10 and 12 degrees outside, I just could not get warm. So what you need to do is, like I said, get yourself a couple of blankets and put them over your doorways, put them over your windows, and hibernate in just one area. Like if you got a small personal heater or something like that, Put that in your area and let it warm up and you'll be able to control the temperature of one small area versus trying to heat the entire home so like this works well for like any anywhere really um the smaller the room the easier it is to keep heated so like if i was going to do it in my living room i have um two big windows my front door has a little bit of a gap and then I have that big um, entryway right there at the hallway and I have another big entryway right here so I would have to do like probably two queen two or three queen size blankets just for that entryway a queen size blanket for my window a queen size blanket for this window and 
a twin or a queen for that hallway and then I would be good but you know if you just have the one little room and you can block it all off and have your children do it also if you have kids and you're dealing with that just put a put a blanket across the window put a blanket across your door and put a heater in there and call it good um, something else you can do is get the big thick contractor bags from Walmart for like I think a big pack of them is less than $11 and you get 45 or 50 of them you can slice those right down the center spray your windows with a little bit of soapy water and then put that up on your window and that will um, act like a window clean and will um, help reduce some of that cold coming in and some of that heat being lost. So um, the other thing you can do is if you are low income, check into your uh, state LIHEAP program. LIHEAP helps pay for your um, electricity, for your wood, or for your propane throughout the winter months. And it is a benefit program that also helps uh, like give you a reduction in your um, energy costs. So um, every year I apply for LIHEAP and I get either, I can have that money applied toward uh, my electric bill or I have a big propane tank so I can have my propane tank filled up. Um, I usually use it for the uh, electricity aspect of it, but they also have a free winterization program through that light heap. So once you come in and you get the light heap, then you can also say, yes, I want winterization, and then they'll come out and they will put the um, clean stuff on your windows and they will um, replace any of the trimming around your door, like putting that padding stuff on there just to help make it a little um, warmer for you throughout the winter months. So um, again, that's Liheap, L-I-H-E-A-P. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, put them in the comment section down below. If you haven't done so already, hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this far along, and I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.